Hey everybody, welcome to Sage Insights. This is Virgil and I'm here today with Chris Packer from the Twin Falls Distillery. How are you, Chris? I'm good, how are you, Virgil? Doing good. Hey, I'm excited to just sit down with you. Wanted to get to know about you and your business, what you guys got going on here. This is a new business to Twin Falls and why don't you tell us about it? Tell us about the vision and where did it start? Cool. Uh, first, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, glad to share with you uh, what we're working on and how excited we are about it. Um, this all started a couple of years ago. Um, a, a friend and I started talking about um, making a making a craft distillery in Twin Falls. As far as we knew at the time, there hadn't there hadn't been any um, in history that we knew of, and so we started kind of looking at the business plan and. And it was something that we both were interested in. In my case, um, I'm a chemical engineer by education, so uh, distilling is kind of the heart or one of the key components of chemical engineering education. So I had some, I had a, a, at least some chops there. Yeah. Um, and with a background in kind of food manufacturing and things like that, it seemed like a pretty good fit. So we started kind of uh, preparing a business plan, and uh, things from there just started to kind of really fall into place pretty quickly. And um, we were able to uh, actually purchase the what used to be the Von Scheitz Brewery. Yeah, which is where we're at today. Right, facility here in Twin, and um, which we're really excited about. It's an awesome location. It's a great. Uh, it's a great building. So we were we feel really fortunate to have had that opportunity come up, um, and so we're excited to have this space for people to come visit and check out the facility. When we first started out, we knew kind of that we wanted to have products that were um, really centered around Idaho. Um, I'm a transplant to Idaho. I moved here about um, nine and a half years ago um, for for a job, uh, actually working at Chobani. Mm -hmm. That's what moved me here. And uh, got to Idaho. Honestly, when we first moved here, we had no like connection to this. We'd never really been here before and thought, well... Maybe it will just be a short-term gig, and then we, we uh, for for just my job, and then we moved here, and it didn't take very long before we fell in love with the place, and n knew right away that we weren't going anywhere, and hopefully never will. Um, so, uh, I've we we really wanted the business to kind of focus on highlighting Idaho, and so that's where that's what's kind of driven driven sort of our products and sort of what we are trying to build out of our brand. It's yep. um, locally sourced locally grown agricultural products that we're turning into high quality small batch handcrafted spirits so. yeah so what are we going to start with what kind of spirits are we talking about uh, well the first product that we'll have on shelves uh will be a uh idaho grown actually Mag magic valley area grown uh potato based vodka so um awesome. yeah we're really excited about that one that'll be the first thing that hits uh, liquor store shelves hopefully here in the next couple months mm -hmm. beautiful well i've gotten to know you over yeah. the last couple months right just recently and <clears throat> one fascinating thing i've learned about you is that you don't actually drink liquor as part of your like daily life yeah i don't actually um it's funny because i i don't i don't really consume alcohol like recreationally because yeah. i i honestly the flavor of ethyl alcohol i don't like it yeah i love all of the science and the flavors that accompany alcohol but not actually the alcohol itself and and i have a really sensitive palate actually so it's really strong like i can i can taste ethyl alcohol really mm -hmm. strong so it's um it's been interesting how much that's been a successful tool for me in developing some of the products that we're working on because i can sort of tune out um the flavor of ethyl alcohol that i don't yeah. that i don't love and okay. focus sort of mentally focus on the other elements and the and the slight flavors like that so so it's been it's been kind of interesting. So I taste alcohol all the time, yeah. but I'm not a huge I'm not a huge uh, consumer myself. So I just think that's amazing. You approach it more from a scientific standpoint yeah. versus just a consumer like right drinking alcohol. Absolutely, and I and I, yeah. I think that also positions me well to not be like emotionally attached, if that makes sense. For so sure. like some people, you know, when they're they really love something, then they uh, they try to they they try to they lose sight of well, that's my taste. Like, I like that. So I'm going to cater everything to that. And in my case, what I focus on is the flavor profiles and consistency and repeatability yeah. so that the end product is the same for the consumer every time. And then 
focusing on flavors that um, that we just think are going to be popular and good and that mm-hmm. people are going to really enjoy. Yep. Yeah. So you guys are starting right now. You expect to have a product in liquor stores here in the next couple months. Is that right? Yep, I think that's true. And so that'd be your first product. And then do you anticipate rolling out more and more? And will it be vodka based only? Or are you going to focus on other spirits? So we have a lot of kind of ideas in the Mm -hmm. pipeline. And I have to be honest, that's one of the challenges of um, starting a business like this is that there's almost unlimited space for creativity. Yeah, for sure. So it's easy to get it's easy to get wound up in and and just you know like offshoot into a bunch of different ideas and things like that so we've got a bunch of ideas we're trying to stay focused right now it's vodka i think the next product will be uh gin we're really excited about a a gin product um and then and then after that i think we're going to uh focus on a sugar beet based Mm. uh spirit which will effectively be a rum um by most people's standards and yeah. so but it'll be an idaho grown rum so so that that's fascinating right so is rum always sugar beet based no in fact yeah i i said essentially yeah. because <laughs> uh the legal definition of rum is that it be sourced by uh cane sugar okay or cane molasses yeah so the um what we're looking to do is sort of honestly push that envelope a little bit because chemically it's the same it's the same sugar source. It's mm-hmm. still, you know, table sugar from beets versus table sugar from cane sugar is effectively the same. Yeah. So um, that's sort of an envelope we're going to push potentially with the TTB, which is the uh, federal regulating body, to allow us to label it as an Idaho rum or something like that, mm-hmm. even though it's made from beets. So okay. yeah. that's something that we're trying to do. Which locally, I mean, that'd be an amazing like connection for sure. our community, right? Yep. Because sugar beets is one of the yeah. main industries around here exactly yeah yeah and that's the goal so we've got potatoes we've got sugar beets and yeah. we're just really focused on trying to kind of highlight all the awesome agricultural stuff that happens right here in in idaho that we yeah. can turn into some really outstanding spirits so. yeah so where did you come from um well i'm i'm kind of a, a an interesting i have an interesting background i uh, my family was uh military based my dad was civil service so I moved here from Omaha, Nebraska, but before that I lived in um, South Dakota. Mm -hmm. Um, And before that I lived in, I guess I'll back up. I went from uh, South Dakota where I was from age two to about 12. My family moved to an Air Force base in Tokyo, Japan. Um, And that's where I actually graduated from high school was on a military base there, Yokota Air Force Base. Um, And which was the best experience of my life yeah. by far. It was amazing. I being in it Japan. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And not just being in Japan, that was culturally amazing, but then also being on the military base um, was was really great. The, the, it, was a, it was this strange fraternity where um, we still, I still have very, very close friends mm-hmm. from high school that I, we're all like this extended family all over the country. So that's, that's really cool is that kind of everybody's scattered. And so now different places that I visit, I'm almost always have somebody that I can hook up with and have dinner with or yeah. whatever all over the country. So that's a lot of fun. But um, after Yakota, um, I went back to South Dakota to go to the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology, mm-hmm. which is an all engineering and science school okay. in Rapid City, South Dakota, which is near where I grew up. And that's where I got my engineering degree. And then after that, I went to uh, Nebraska, a couple stops in Nebraska for yep. jobs I did. And then um, I was working at a dairy in Omaha, um, when I got hired to come uh, work and help build out the Chobani facility here in Twin Falls. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Did you bring your family out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, they've been here. Um, my my son Jackson is 16, and my uh, his younger brother Lucas is uh, soon to be 14. And we have a, our, our little caboose is Nora. She's She was our surprise, and she uh, just turned four in March. So she was born here. My boys were born, uh, Jackson was born in South Dakota, Lucas yep. was born in Nebraska, and they both came here when they were like, f- I think four and six yeah. is when we moved here. And so they're, as far as they're concerned, they're pretty much Idaho raised. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, we're sitting in the Bonshai building, or what used to be known as the Bonshai building. Right. So now it's become Twin Falls Distillery. Yep. And uh, tell me about kind of the process on how you guys ended up here. You started out looking for other locations, possible options to lease, 
and then it became apparent that you actually had an opportunity here at the old Von Scheitz. Yeah, when we first started, um, when we first started getting really serious about finding a location, of course, going with that is the equipment that we would need to run the facility. So, um, any you know, we were we were hoping that we'd be able to find uh, used equipment somewhere on the network in the United States, and we got really insanely lucky in that yeah. um, Von Scheitz just happened to be selling their facility as well as the equipment. And when we, when we originally reached out to them, we only intended to purchase the equipment. And we're really excited about that. And we're able to make a deal that worked well for both of us. So and that was already happening. Yeah, and that you was were a, yep. doing we were, the deal on the equipment. hundred percent. We yep. were, we'd already kind of come to an agreement on that. And we were only originally intending to purchase the equipment. And at that point, honestly, we thought we loved the location, but thought sort of like, now nah, that's out of our reach. We probably can't afford it or, or whatever. And, and what ended up happening was when we started looking at some of the places that we wanted to lease, the um, modifications that we'd have to make um, or improvements that we'd have to make to the space were going to be very expensive mm -hmm. in a lot of cases. And so, and then not even maybe the amount of space that we would want or need. So then um, after looking at some of those costs, it, it became apparent that, well, maybe we, maybe it will make more sense to purchase the building. And so we reached out to, uh, the owner of the building, which again, we already had the deal for the yeah. equipment just said, Hey, you know, maybe, you know, we might be interested in buying the building. He had actually asked us that the first time that we came in Okay. and I told him, Oh, well, you know, basically it's that we can't afford that or whatever. And, um, after looking at some of the other costs, I was like, well, you know what, actually it might, it might work out really well. So, yeah. so we got lucky, we worked out a deal and we were able to purchase the building and the equipment, um, at the same time effectively and ended up in a location that's I mean, really, really exciting for us. We this is kind of the spot or you're the heart of downtown. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And it, and it has a nice blend of space for us to mm -hmm. to actually run our process, but also a, a retail front for us to have people come in and tour the facility, do tastings. Um, we'll ultimately we will have retail space where we'll yep. sell our bottles, things like that. So and there will be a tasting menu eventually, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, That'll yep. be awesome. we'll have a tasting room open. Um, and that will all come hopefully soon after we get up and running and are able to get production into the our product into the liquor stores. Yeah. So. Well, what a smooth transition here. So all your equipment's already here. Yeah. You didn't have to move it. You didn't have to move anything in. Music to my ears. Yeah. yeah. It was beautiful. And here we are. Yeah. yeah that, was, <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then so kind of the process. So I also know you guys are able to connect with the URA, right? Yes. And get some updated uh, electrical systems and. Mm -hmm different things that they they helped with or yeah they were super helpful yeah. um we what happened was is the building that we're in right now originally only had uh a single phase power and what and and not a ton available to be honest we only had a 200 amp main service and we um are still will run off um, electric heating elements and so right away we were like, well, we, we probably need to go to what's called three phase power yeah. and we needed more power than what we had. So in looking at that, um, the cost to, to do that was, uh, going to be pretty expensive, um, for us as a small business starting up. And so I just kind of reached out to the URA when we, when we got the quote from, um, Idaho power on what that was going to take to do. And, um, they were actually, uh, they said, yeah, you know what, we've, we've actually helped other small businesses in the area yeah. pay for those electrical upgrades. You should submit, you know, you should submit a request to us and we'll review it. And so we did that and uh, went in front of the committee and they, they approved it. And it was, it was really great. It was a huge help for us. And it was a nice, I mean, as again, as a small startup business, it was yeah. a, a huge boost for us to not have to pay for that infrastructure. So yep. that was great. Yep. For sure. So we're here at the facility right now. Um, you know, clearly like we're in progress. Sure. We're almost there. What can we kind of expect here over the next couple months? What are we What are we looking at? Sure. So, like I said, over the next couple of months, we will um, we'll have our first product on the shelves at the liquor stores, and that will be our um, that will be our Magic Valley Vodka. That's uh, what we're calling awesome. the product. Yeah. Um, and uh, that that will get on the shelves in a 750 milliliter bottle. Um, once that's on the shelves and we're up in production on that, then we'll start pursuing. Um, retail space permitting as well as tasting room permitting mm -hmm. those should go relatively quickly um, I'm hoping a few months so six months or so from now I'm hoping we have those in place a lot of it's going to depend on the production schedule and things like that yeah. um, we're pretty lean there's not a lot of 
not not a lot of us here working to get to to get the facility up and running so yeah. so there's a lot of hats to wear which uh, i feel lucky because my background in engineering at food manufacturing facilities has already prepared me some for that so yeah. that's good <laughs> um but um but yeah that would be the idea is that we'll end up with a tasting room a retail space um and then ultimately down the road we have talked about and would like to get um the the tap room here at von scheitz uh-huh. back opened up yeah. and so that the public can come in and drink, um, you know, beer on tap and things like that, or a beer and wine actually. Yeah. Um, and we really want to focus on featuring local local breweries. Which local we've breweries. Got a handful. Of yeah, absolutely. Up here yeah. Recently, so. We're really excited about that. So we want to yeah. be able to feature local breweries and local wineries here um, in the facility, so that we can continue to kind of promote, you know, local Idaho stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the plan. Um, and then as we and then as I mentioned before, as we start to get more stabilized on some of these things that's when we'll roll out new products we're always doing kind of research and development on trying new things and trying new flavors or things like that but super excited about the vodka coming up the gin i know there's a lot going in in that world right Right. yeah i mean you've seen some of the infusions with different flavors 100 yeah yeah yeah, really exciting yeah super excited about the gin that's one that um i think obviously gin has so much room for creativity in the botanical blend So we're really, really excited about that and think we can come up with some, we've got some really awesome blends already that we've made that we awesome. think are really, really going to be tasty and people are going to really appreciate. So excited about that. Well, anything you want to finish with, let us know what's coming, what you're excited about, what's on um, your heart. Man, I, I, I'm I, just already really appreciative of the community and how yeah. supportive people have been. We're, um, I get a lot of you know people asking questions about when we'll be up and running and believe me, it's it's... Uh, not as soon as I would like. So yeah. we're doing our best to get things going as fast as we can. Um, but so far there's been a lot of excitement and a lot of support from a lot of people in the community. And we're, and that's, that's really awesome. It's, it's nothing less than what I would have expected at Twin Falls. Cause that's yeah. all I've seen since I've been here, but um, really excited about that. And just ask that, you know, people, once we get up and running, come see us and, and come check things out. And uh, I'm happy to, I'm an open book, so I'm happy to share yeah. if you have questions or whatever else. I love, I love talking about the stuff. It's, I'm really passionate about it. So, you know, I, I can't wait to share what we've got uh, in store for people. So, yeah. And we love local businesses. And I think it's just so exciting. And kind of your focus is to focus on Idaho-based, like, uh, product and yep. ag. And, and Absolutely. I just think that's, like, such a perfect combination. So I'm excited about what you're doing and. Yeah, really good to just know you and like yeah. hang out with you for a little bit. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Thanks, really Chris. exciting. Yeah. Thanks. Chris, where do we find you on social? Uh, you can find us on all major social media outlets um, under Twin Falls Distillery. If you just search us, um, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, Soon to be TikTok. Oh, yeah, that's right. TikTok. Yeah. That's going to be a big deal. Really looking forward to getting You're on You're dancing? My, yeah. Okay. TikTok dances. That's going to be. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I expect that to really blow up for us. Um and, um, you know, we'd appreciate it if people would just go uh, search us out, give us a, a like and a follow, and share our pages as much as possible so that uh, everyone can get to know us. So. Yeah, let's do that. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you.